We have the pleasure this evening of recognizing highly accomplished jurists, each of whom have made powerful and lasting contributions to improving our system of justice throughout the state of California. We have three awardees this evening to honor, each of whom will be introduced by someone that knows them well. Immediately following uh, the ceremony this evening, we have a reception that you saw being set up in the foyer, and we want everybody to stick around so we can enjoy the inspiration that we experience and talk about the positive path to the future that we're gonna hear about tonight. The annual presentation of these awards is intended to recognize the demonstrated and unselfish commitment to our judicial system shown by these three individuals. But it is also an opportunity to share with the broader community and the public at large the inspiration that comes from hearing about their efforts, their accomplishments, and their insights. To that end, we start our evening by hearing from the 29th Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, leader of our judicial branch, and chair of the Judicial Council, who herself is a constant source of strength, vision, as well as a model of integrity and, and excellence, not only for the judicial branch and all of us that participate in it, but for our entire government and for all the citizens of the state of California. Please, let's welcome Chief Justice Patricia Guerrero. Thank you so much, Presiding Judge Mormon. We appreciate you acting as MC. Where are you? You're trying to hide. <laughs> On behalf of the Judicial Council tonight, and keeping things running as smoothly as you do in your courtroom, um, I would like to add my welcome as Chief Justice of California and Chair of the Judicial Council to all of you here today. Welcome to our award honorees. Judicial Council members, our award partners, and our staff. And of course, a special welcome to the family, friends, and colleagues of our honorees, Judge Juhas, Presiding Justice Edmund, and Justice Slough. You also deserve thanks and recognition for assisting them throughout their careers and for making sacrifices which have helped to enable their successes as dedicated public servants. Thank you to all of you as well. I think you deserve a round of applause. <laughs> and also congratulations to all of us who managed to navigate the APEC <laughs> meetings to be here. I was a little worried about that. I'm proud to be able to play a role in this celebration of achievement because that is why we're here today, to celebrate. To celebrate these incredible leaders for their accomplishments. The Judicial Council created these awards 30 years ago to honor dedicated public servants for all of the following reasons. For the breadth and impact of their contributions, the nature of the work that they accomplished, the time expended outside of normal work hours, their success in surmounting challenges and limitations, and their contributions to advancing the Council's strategic goals. So far, the Council has honored 117 individuals and four different organizations for their commitment to these goals and objectives, and their contributions to access, fairness, diversity, and inclusion are number one goal. The Aranda Access to Justice Award our partnership award with the California Law uh, Judges Association and the California Lawyers Association was first presented in 1999, and to date we've collectively recognized 22 individuals. They have honored the legacy of Judge Benjamin Aranda III. From his Torrance courtroom, Judge Aranda sought to promote fairness and access in the courts, especially for low and moderate income Californians. His role models were Abraham Lincoln and Benito Juarez, both lawyers and statesmen. He once said the following, this is a quote from him, I'm a small town judge, and that is probably all I will ever be. 
but I feel if I can do my share to make people a little happier, I will accomplish something to make the world a little bit better place to live. This afternoon, we acknowledge three more individuals who have made the world a better place. They have been successful in their own right, but have also benefited countless others through their success because they chose careers in public service and to serve the cause of justice. Another quote for you from Mark Twain, who once said, fewer things are harder to put up with than the annoyance of a good example. <laughs> well, get ready, because we're here to celebrate some really good examples. Role models from our judicial branch, for judicial officers and for justice system partners and for future members of the profession and future leaders of the judicial branch. But we don't share all aspects of Mark Twain's sentiments. Far from being annoyed, we're delighted. We're delighted to be here with you, with your families and friends, to celebrate your dedication, your hard work, and your good example. You have done so much to strengthen judicial independence and enhance the public's trust and confidence in California's judicial branch. Thank you for your service and congratulations on this important recognition by your peers and colleagues and for having made the world a little bit better place to live. Thank you. All right, thank you, Chief. Our next awardee is Justice Marcia Slow. And as a jurist and member of branch leadership, I had a first row seat to see her uncanny vision, her unrelenting courage, her uh, unflappable persistence, her humility, and her absolute determination to do the right thing. Her determination to do the right thing get to the right result, but include everybody in the conversation along the way has been really something astonishing to watch. As you are about to hear, she has been a leader in many branch innovations that have resulted in fundamental changes in our trial courts, changes that make our everyday activity, our everyday efforts that much better. Thank you. A bit of background, Justice Slough began her career, her judicial career in 2003 when she was appointed to the bench by Governor Davis. She served as the presiding judge of the juvenile court, then assistant presiding judge of the full court before being twice elected as the presiding judge for the full court. Governor Brown elevated Justice Slough to the fourth district court of appeal in Riverside in 2015. She, her elevation made history because when she was appointed, she was the first openly gay justice on the fourth district. She officially, much to sadness of us, others, except for Jill. Um, <laughs> she, <laughs> she officially retired at the end of August of this year after authoring 454 opinions, 55 published opinions, and giving many valuable years of service to the Judicial Council. Among her many fine qualities, which you will hear about uh, on the video and hear others speak about, I happen to know she's a voracious reader. She plays a mean game of golf. She's a big fan of both men's and women's NCAA basketball. Go Kansas, as I believe, yeah. And makes her own pizza and is one of the toughest but kindest human beings any of us will ever know. Let's watch. From presiding judge to justice, Justice Marcia Slough combined astute policies with compassionate leadership. She was instrumental in leading and building the most critical, sensitive, and impactful policies of the Judicial Council. In all of her responsibilities, and they were myriad, 
She brought her analytical brilliance and her collaborative nature. Justice Slough has worked tirelessly to improve justice in California, and she has wildly succeeded in that endeavor. I served with Justice Lau when she was chair of the technology committee. I was on the committee, so I got to really experience um, not just how she ran meetings, but how she uh, crafted the technology committee's mission, right? How she wanted to use technology to move the entire judicial branch forward. And she was outstanding at uh, bringing together that community, strengthening it and expanding it. One of her great superpowers, and she has many, but one of them is her ability to listen and to listen actively, to allow people to be heard and to know that they've been heard. And so the pretrial operations work group did what its name says is you looked at how does uh, uh, bail work, how does uh, release work, and what are the goals of public safety. I think Justice Lau's role in the efforts with respect to pretrial reform is that yes we can to let us know yes this is a big topic, it's a big subject, it's controversial, but yes we can. During the time of the uh, initial uh, outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, the council leadership was really concerned about access to justice and balancing that with the safety of the public as well as safety of staff. So we talked about, is there a need for emergency rules of court? What would those look like? What is the most pressing rule that is needed? Justice Slough's role in all of these efforts was keeping us all calm when you do have something that you have never done before and it's uncharted water, you need a leader's leader. So she spearheaded the work group and one thing that I thought that she did very masterfully amongst uh, many other things was ensure that we got input from the myriad um, stakeholders. The goal going forward to increase remote access as much as we possibly can because that actually has um, enabled the branch to be more responsive to the community as a whole. I just can't say enough about um, the just truly the masterful way that Justice Slough ensured that everybody got heard and um, she brought to the table both her own level of expertise um, and her willingness to hear from everyone and a humility that enabled people to really uh, express their, their concerns and their thoughts. Justice Slaw was asked to uh, chair a working group that would really reach down, dive down on an on a in-depth level to determine what were the pros and cons of seeking to work with the legislature to come up with some sort of remote appearance bill. Justice Slough was extraordinary in her ability to bring all of these people together to maintain a collective working group that recognized that the purpose at the end of the day was to determine what is the right thing to do. Well, everyone should know her. <laughs> if you haven't met her, um, you're missing out on a great opportunity because she is a lovely, gracious, wickedly funny, uh, endearing, and just a delight to work with. There are certain people that we come across in a life, uh, whether in our personal uh, lives or our professional lives or both, um, and they make us better people. She's a remarkable person. Um, and an example of uh, everything that uh, everything that a judge uh, should try to be. And to present the award uh, to Justice Slouch and I, please welcome Ms. Millicent Tidwell, the Acting Administrative Director of the, for the Judicial Council, Ms. Shelley Curran, our incoming Administrative Director, and Rob, where's Rob? Rob, come on up. Rob, our Chief Deputy Director of the Judicial Council, 
take it away. Thank you. Um, we arm wrestled to see who got to introduce you today, and it was a tie, so here we are. Um, thank you, Judge Marmon. Um, and Shelly and I are so glad to have this opportunity to introduce and to present the Judicial Councils of California's highest honor to Justice Marcia Slough. The comments you've just heard in the introductory video reflect Justice Slough's many, many important contributions to improving the administration of justice in our state. They also reflect the type of leader that she is, thoughtful, collaborative, deliberative, and inspiring. It has been my honor and my great, great pleasure to work with Justice Lau in her role as a member of the Judicial Council and chair of the Executive and Planning Committee until her retirement in August of this year. In that leadership role, as well as in many other responsibilities that she accepted on behalf of the council, she has been on the front lines of tackling some of the most difficult, thorny issues our branch has faced in recent years. The tireless amounts of hours that we spent working through all the COVID rules and emergency rules, I just, I can't even tell you how your guiding hand was really the steady rudder that kept everybody going. It has been a great experience to see her in action, leading, guiding, sometimes poking a little with a stick when needed in order to get the job done. And she always got the job done for the people of the California and for the branch. Justice Slough is held in highest esteem, not only by her former Judicial Council colleagues, but by council staff, many of whom are here today to celebrate you. I know that she has also um, admired and respected, is also admired and respected by her former colleagues and the staff of, uh, that worked with you at Superior Court of San Bernardino as well, and the Fourth District Court of Appeal. You have a very big fan club. Um, as acting administrative director and on behalf of the staff here at the Judicial Council, I wanted to have a big thank you to Justice Slough for your exemplary leadership and your extraordinary contributions to our justice system. I also want to thank you for your professional support and your friendship over the years. And as retirement looms for me at the end of this year, I look forward to hanging out with you uh, when we both don't have to be at meetings the next day. So um, congratulations on your award. I'll turn it over to Shelley. Thank you. Thank you, Millicent. Um, I am just thrilled to see Justice Slough's name added to the distinguished list of council award recipients, along with presiding justice Edmund and Judge Juhas. Congratulations to all three of you. As a highly respected judge, presiding judge and justice with a career spanning 20 years, and as a leading member of the policy-making body of our state court system, and numerous advisory committees, task force, and work groups for the past decade, Justice Slough has left an indelible mark on our branch and on all of those of us who have had the pleasure of working closely with her, myself included. For 10 years, I've been fortunate to get to know and work closely with Justice Lau, advancing a number of the council's key initiatives for our court system, including, and I'll use our favorite disclaimer here, but not limited to, <laughs> chair roles with the trial court presiding judges advisory committee, the pretrial reform operations work group, the executive and planning committee before, during, and after the pandemic. And I have to say, each of those was its own separate job, so they get their own highlight. And the ad hoc work group on post-pandemic initiatives, otherwise known as P3, and along with the subgroup that recommended the statewide implementation of remote civil proceedings. As proof that the definition of retirement is really malleable, Justice Lau will be with us tomorrow in <laughs> chambers to deliver the final report of P3. Because of Justice Lau's clarity of purpose with respect to our branch's responsibility to provide fair and equal access to justice, 
because of her openness to new ideas and because of her unshakable commitment to the welfare of others, she has been a leading light in bringing about lasting positive change in our courts and in the way that we serve all Californians. In describing her work to me on the council, Justice Lau uses the image and has used the image of a rowing team with each individual strengths, but working in unison to propel the boat forward. Justice Lau, I have been proud to crew and pull a laboring oar with you. And I echo Millicent's sentiments and those of many in this room. I will always be grateful for your professional support, mentorship, and friendship. Going forward, I'm gonna to continue to draw inspiration from you and your example in working with the chief, the council, the courts, and our justice system partners to serve the public. Congratulations in this recognition. It is exceptionally well-deserved. Come on up. I didn't know you were doing that. Many of you have heard me say before, I come from a long line of criers. Comes natural, so don't, don't be afraid. But also a long line of people who laugh and smile and gain strength from the people that they hang out with. Um, you know, I came from Kansas, and so there's this guy from Kansas, Ted Lasso. <laughs> He would say something right now like, I, I feel this big, huge plate of gratefulness here. <laughs> and that's kind of what I feel right now. There's this big plate of gratefulness. Um, for all of it. So, um, I have to start with you, Jill. I love you deeply. And you have been a tremendous support and guide for me over these past 20 years as a judge. We've been together for 28, so you knew me before. Um, but also for my time on Judicial Council and having me come home and hearing about some of the stuff that we're working on that's not always very uh, fun and sometimes not well received by many, but also extremely important. And I always knew that I was getting my point across when I would look at Jill and her eyes would be half masked and I would go, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she is listening, I know she is, and I'm so grateful that you were always there and you were always supportive and I love you deeply. And nothing means more to me now than having every day to do what we wanna do when we wanna do it without stopping for a meeting at noon. <laughs> Judge Juhas, I never had the pleasure of working with you. We've talked before and I've also followed your uh, esteemed path and all the work that you do, particularly in family law and, and work to help those who need help so deeply. Congratulations to you. It is an honor to be here with you tonight. Uh, Lee, likewise, I have uh, treasure those times we were together, um, that we were forged together when we would pull our pennies out of our pockets and rub them together because the governor had taken all of our dollars, right? And we had to figure out how to do and what to do, Lori, others. Um, so I leaned over to Jill when this thing started and I said, I didn't prepare anything to say. <laughs> and she said, now I'm nervous. <laughs> 
and I didn't um, because, Rob, was it 10 years ago, eight years ago, you got this award? Eight, seven years ago, and I handed the award to you, and I had comments prepared. And the chief at the time, she said, what is that? I said, it's my comments. She goes, don't. Speak from your heart. Just speak from your heart. And so what I wish I could do tonight as I look out and I see so many people that I've worked on so many projects with, and now Jill's getting nervous because she knows I'm going to start naming people and I'll miss somebody. So I'm not going to, I promise. But people that I worked on my trial court with, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for following uh, during those very difficult times. And thank you for your leadership, Judge Rogan, now as the presiding judge of San Bernardino and the leadership that you will show during your term. I'm so pleased for our court that they have you leading. Judge Brody, thank you for all you've done in the myriad arenas of technology, not only branch-wide, but also for that court that is in such great need of remote technology because of its geographic, geographic size, so thank you. For staff um, who worked on technology, worked on uh, P3, pilot programs worked on, Gretchen, remember working on the, the rule about releasing names of settlements when sexual harassment was involved? Boy, that was a real popular work group to be on. <laughs> I got a lot of phone calls from men. <laughs> no, I made that part up. But so many people who have helped me, and I think uh, through all of the paths that we've worked on together and the roads that we've crossed together, um, one of the things that I think has been the most important to me on a very personal level, and that was the change in the word to include the word inclusivity in our goal and our mission as a judicial council. I think that my colleagues uh, got tired of hearing me say, I think we need to add this word. I think we need to add this word. And ultimately, through the support of so many, we did. And it's important because it's not just about diversity, because we can all increase percentages. But until everyone is actually included, when their voice is heard, when they are brought to the table, not just as a body, but as a mind and a soul and a spirit with something to add. That's when things get interesting. Judge Juhas, you've been inclusive in your work. Lee, you have. And so many others in this room tonight have. And I think the thing that I am indeed most grateful for is the fact that you included me. So thank you. And thank you, Chief, for your leadership. I love you all, and I miss you. Um, and I will send you pictures. <laughs> thank you.